babalik po ang Juan EU Connect. Now we're on to our second segment, Immigration 101 with Solicitor Crystal Diaz. Hi, Crystal. Hi, Rose. Uh, hi, everyone sa mga ka-connect po dito na nanonood this Sunday sa Juan EU Connect Immigration 101. Okay, Crystal. So I understand na interesting yung topic natin ngayon because hindi lang siya uh, maraming, <laughs> a, a, actually the, the word is not interesting, a little bit controversial. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Dahil ang guest mo ngayon is um, a client na magbabahagi ng kwento Dahil ito ay maselan. It's a paternity suit kung paano ba you acknowledge ng uh, partner ang kanyang anak, no? So please take it away. I'm I'm interested to listen and learn from the segment. Okay. Thank you, Rose. So today, just for legal reasons, we're not going to mention about the other parties, um, but we are privileged, in fact, to have our guest today who went through so much this past year. Um, she lived uh, in Ukraine, I believe. I'm not sure if she's able to tell us something about that, uh, her time in Ukraine. But when she came to the UK, her world turned upside down uh, because the, the person who she expected to be with her, uh, to be with her child, uh, did not come through. So. Ang issue po natin ngayon is to do with paternity case. So she decided to stay in the country when she got pregnant. And um, she was hoping she will have the help of the father of the child. But unfortunately, it wasn't forthcoming. So she sought the help of social media and everyone else um, to, to really fight for her, her case. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce to you Miss Sheena Palma. Hello po, Miss Palma. Hello. Um, okay lang po, stress. <laughs> stress. Okay, don't worry. It, it, it will be very quick. We won't be long. But uh, I would like to thank you personally for, for joining the show. This show um it is a platform for you to tell your story because I know you've gone through so much in your life, but but it's a good ending, Diba. So <laughs> let me just introduce to you the person who helped you in your case as well, because Sheena, in fact, is my client, client of Dice Solicitors, and our team has been so hands-on sa case niya, and we have our guest today, actually, she is part of One You Connect. She is a mentee, so she's part of the mentorship program because of One You Connect. She is uh, an aspiring solicitor to be, uh, and she's due to. She actually finished her legal practice course and master's degree, where she got distinction and commendation. So, please give it a round of applause. Okay, Michael Lee. Hello, Miss Lee. Hello, hello. Good afternoon and good evening. That's a good entrance for you, right? <laughs> it's fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, um, just to be clear, obviously, you know, um, you're not a qualified solicitor yet. You will be, but you are under my supervision. So, for, uh, whatever work we did, it was under me. Yeah. Now, uh, Miss Gina Palma was obviously very happy with the result of uh, her case because this case is not a straightforward case, is it, Sheena? Yeah. Right. So, uh, you, you you can tell me you know what you want to tell me. If you don't want to tell you know little detail, then that's fine. It's just really I want to find out more. You're from the Philippines, right? So, galing po kay sa Philippines. Ante ka sa pukay sa Pilipinas. Ah, Cebu. Cebu. Okay, Cebu na kayo. Pero I I I know that you lived in Ukraine for a little while. Did you live there for how long? Uh, for about two and a half years, I worked mm -hmm. and lived there. So how did you find Ukraine? Because obviously what's happening with Ukraine right now, there's a war going on. And uh, not many Filipinos, actually, I, that I know, except you, I suppose, um, who, 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 who was there. So what's the country of Ukraine? 
Um, Ukraine is a very lovely place. Um, there might be some, you know, um, racism going on, but overall, there are very happy people and they're very kind and acceptance. And I learned so many things about them. I learned, um, what I learned so much is it doesn't matter if you, if you communicate with them very well, as long as you spoke something about their language. It's like Dobreden, Jakuyo, or Yadlubitube, something like that. And they they will love you very much. Oh, that sounds very impressive already. What did you say? What 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 are they? What did you mean by that when you say? Um Dobreden is like um a good day. Um Jakuyo mm-hmm. means thank you. Um Yadlubitube means um I love you. Oh, that's very nice. Yes, definitely you need to learn that. Okay, <laughs> let me just, go from picking up from Ukraine, for you actually met your ex-partner there, the, the father of your child, correct? Um, yes, I was on the process of my divorce and my, my ex-husband and I decided to, to separate the ways. Um, so I went back to the dating site and... I have no really desire of, um, you know, um, finding a man, but there you go. So he contacted me first um, mm-hmm. from the very beginning, and somehow there was a big misunderstanding in our relationship. And so, yeah, um, we went back and communicating again, and he tried to find me everywhere on social, uh, social media and um, that's how we reconciled and he visited me uh, before my operation for my brain tumor and um, we um, met a few times you know like sometimes he stayed a, uh, a week or over a week you know sometimes a day it's just it's just a matter of the income you know okay so it, it it was a long relationship. It was a, a serious relationship. And then you came to the UK. When did you come to the UK for? It was a valid visa, right? You came to the UK with a valid visa. So, yeah, um, I'm a very passionate type of person. Um, I worked in different charities and you know, I volunteered. So I found the um, the uh, UK has uh, a great opportunities of accepting people to do the volunteering, um, like for example, different charities. So I took that um, as, a, as a way of, you know, um, exploring myself. And that's how I applied the, the, the visa from the beginning. And yeah, that's how I got here in UK because of the volunteering for the charity. Okay. And I mean, you're obviously doing a good job. And because you found your partner, who's British national, so we we have to establish that he was actually a British citizen. So you thought, okay, it would be a a, a relationship you think is going to work this time. So you you felt pregnant, correct? Um. So I stayed here uh, before I got pregnant. I stayed. I stayed here for like about three months and it turns out that I got pregnant. Um, the first time I got pregnant, I uh, ended up um, having a mes- mascarage. Um, the second time it was um, another mes- mascarage. And the third time was, you know, was the success. It was my son. It, was, um, it wasn't an er- um, easy journey for me um, when I got pregnant because I ended up having um, hypermesis, um, yeah, hypermesis. I- I could not say the, the other one, <laughs> but yeah, it was, um, I ended up, of, you know, not eating, not drinking, as in literally, like, I can't move my whole body. I've been to the different, uh, to the hospitals multiple times just because of that. And during this time, you're still with your partner, correct? You, you know, I know you've gone through uh traumatic times you know you said you twice you had a miscarriage and then but how was your uh, relationship with your partner at the time when you were going through this the the first time um i got pregnant um we ended up having a huge argument it wasn't um a plan pregnancy 
I did not want it. Uh, no, I did not try it. And he's and so you see. Um, the second one is like I said to myself, okay, um, um, I'm not gonna say anything because I don't feel you know this is going to be a successful pregnancy anyway. But yeah, um, during yeah during the first time I got pregnant, there's um multiple um, argument. Um, that's the very big um. They, the conflict between you know between us is getting worse. Um, there's a domestic um, violence um, going on. You know he tried to um, hurt me emotionally and mentally. I wasn't more like a physically yet, but there is an occasional you know. Um, during the success of my pregnancy, it took me a while to tell my ex partner about my pregnancy because. I was very afraid of him. Um, I am afraid of what he can possibly do or what he can possibly say. I had to lie, you know, for the sake of my 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 well being and for the sake of my, you know, my son. So I gotta do the right thing. I've been contacting the my midwife, and um, my midwife was the one who saved me. Uh, he said, uh, she said, you know, let me help you. Because you are in a domestic violence relationship right now, I try to deny everything because I I need to I need to protect my ex, you know. Because I was blindly in love. Of course, you kind of make a lot of mistakes because of that. And I'm so stupid and naive during that time, and I keep denying, denying, and to the point where I said, "Yes, help me." And she referred me to the social worker for adults and for the IFA. And, you know, to the charity Filipino and did, did you also I, go on did you also ask um the social media for for advice for um, help? Um I did. I did the first time and it wasn't really very that serious. More likely, I'm working with a charity and the IFA mm -hmm. and the social worker. You know, I'm trying mm -hmm. to keep denying them, denying them, and so on. And I reached to the point where I contacted police already because of the domestic. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, when when I when my ex lied and kicked me out, um, I was totally um, the the money that he gave me. Is enough to the support of you know uh, for my accommodation and for the food. He told me that the five hundred pounds would be enough for me going back home for the uh, for the place to stay in for a few days. Uh, once I go to book in um an air um a ticket, going back home and for my food. Basically, it wasn't Wait, enough. The make sure you know, so just just to be clear, you told him you were pregnant. At this point, yes, I, I told him, and he he was, wasn't happy with it. Uh, when I, um after two and uh, after two months, of, you know, hiding the pregnancy, when I finally had the courage to tell him the truth, um, he doesn't he didn't stop of uh, hurting me emotionally, verbally. At some point, he ended up um, hurting me physically, and. What are you telling? I, you said, is, did you want you to go back to the Philippines after you yes. found out you were pregnant? Correct. Mm -hmm. And what did you do? Um. So what I did, I've been contacting different solicitors, different uh, charities, um, because at those point, I he allowed me to stay until I left from his property right and so um and i'm not able to eat properly at all and he doesn't care if i'm eating or not if i'm drinking or not if i'm sleeping or not he doesn't care he doesn't care if i will die or be alive you know all he cares is he doesn't want any responsibility towards me and my and our child and he asked me multiple times to abort our child Hmm. I accepted it at first time because I thought he, he did the right um I thought uh whatever he said about the abortion is the right thing. So I ended up I, he drops me off to the um the hospital and then 
before the um the appointment um before the appointment of my uh, for the abortion um my GT told me tell me the truth do you really want this or you actually want this and again I deny it I said I want it and I you know I defend my ex because I'm so stupid and I'm and during the day of the abortion appointment um they did an ultrasound to check if the baby's alive I was already about 10 weeks pregnant and they did an ultrasound and for the first time I saw my son form as a human and I said to myself I can't do this um I can't afford this child you know this is a life there's already hands you know a head um brain or everything and I can't um when I told him um when I left to the hospital he was so happy because he thought um I already had the medication of you know uh, getting rid uh reading off the um the, you know the baby and so on and I said to him you know I can't do it I'm sorry I'm not you know, I'm not that really harsh type of person killing, you know, an innocent, innocent child. And that's the, the the beginning of fighting with me, hurting emotionally, verbally, physically, emotionally, and everything. And I was to the point of what can I do? I want I want to save myself. You know, I bit and when I told the info about that, they asked me because a lot of shelters declined my application, staying over because because of my abusive ex, and they said uh, they cannot help me because I have no request in public time. So I have. Sheena, you are you are very brave to to tell us your story. I I, I feel you there, and uh, I I can I can't imagine what you're going through really. But it's not something that you know everybody should go through. But um, my stepdad, you know, he supports pro life. You you made the right decision certainly because your son is absolutely adorable. It's, it's gorgeous. Um, but obviously, can I just ask you why didn't you go back home and raise your child there? Obviously, you know, you want to stay in the UK. But what's the reason? The main reason why you wanted to to spend your time in the UK rather than Philippines. My my ex has um, a lifetime um, this, um, how can I say a disease, and um, that kind of disease is like um, there's no it's not curable but it can help to um, how can I say this um, it's like an um, anti-inflammatory or something like that but you, it would be very difficult for uh, for me personally finding it um, in Philippines. And at the same time, um, my son, to be honest, I mean, don't, don't get it wrong. Philippines is a very lovely country. You know, I was born and raised there. But I see my, my son, you know, and well, my he's son British. has a lot. The, the, <laughs> fact that, um, the fact is that the father is British. That makes your son British automatically, right? But this is the yes. issue, Sheena. He didn't want to acknowledge he's the father. That's the problem, right? I so, asked him about. I told him about that. Um, you should do the right thing. You yes. know, your our, yeah, he our did son. He did. Yeah, he didn't do the right thing because we we had to go through such rigorous uh, process to make sure he is the father of your child. So. Let me put you on pause there, Sheena. Catch your breath because you have you are so brave. You've done a, a very good job. So thank you very much for sharing your story. story. Just hold on there because I'm going to introduce Micah now because Mike and I worked on your case. And we had it had to be um, uh, done strategically because when you found out you were pregnant, we, we, we were, you know, thinking about, okay, how am I going to uh, stay in this country? You know, your visa is running out soon. You didn't want to become an overstayer. So 
you know, you you were due, you had uh, your ten weeks pregnant. You know, you st still far away till you deliver the baby. So what we're gonna do? What we did is we applied to the home office while you were pregnant. We didn't have anything. We didn't have birth certificate. We didn't even have passport for the child, obviously, and nothing from the father. So, Micah, what yes. did we do? You explain. So, Micah, a very brilliant trainee uh, solicitor, and she's always hands-on, you know, as you know, Sheena, she's always there, you know, every every step of the way. So, Micah, tell, tell us what uh, what we did. Um, so in general, to apply for a visa based on the fact that you're a parent of a British child, you have to establish two main things. So the first thing is that the child's citizenship status. Um, and the second thing is that the parent has parental responsibility over the child. Um, now, in order to prove a child's citizenship, generally, it's, it's pretty straightforward. So if they have a British parent, um, you can show proof of that parent's British passport and also the birth certificate to show that that is the paternal father or mother. Um, the second one, which is parental responsibility, is um, shown through you know letters from school teachers, um, read health book, uh, medical letters, just to show that you play an active role in, in this child's life. Um, there are other requirements as well. So there's a financial requirement to show that you've been earning um, at least 18,600 per annum. So whether that's through self-employment, cash savings, um, employment, you've just got to show that through pay slips, uh, bank statements, and there's also um, accommodation so that your accommodation is um, not overcrowded um, and that you're not relying on public funds. If the Home Office finds that you meet all of those rules, They'll grant you a visa called leave to remain as a parent under the five-year route. However, if they find that you don't meet all the immigration rules, however, due to your exceptional circumstances and your right to remain in the UK as a parent of a British child, they will grant it to you under the 10-year route. So this visa, however, is only valid for two and a half years. So you will have to continuously renew until you meet that five-year period or 10-year period. Okay. That, that's a very good point, and Micah. So she's basically highlighted the general requirements when applying under the five-year route and the 10-year route. Unfortunately, Sheena, you didn't meet the requirements under the five-year route, so we had to apply under the 10-year route because of your very special circumstances. So this has been the discussion of the day. Um, while when we made the application to the home office we then made an application to the court for a dna test because unfortunately the father did not agree um to put his name anywhere on the legal papers and so we had to apply for dna test to the court so just briefly micah the process and how we made the application Sure. So there's a specific form that we have to fill in. It's called the application for um, a declaration of parentage. And you're asking the court to basically order that the um, potential parent um, conduct a DNA test. Um, in the form, you do have to explain why. So for this um, case, for example, it was to have him on the birth certificate. Um, once it's been processed by the court, they will set a court date. And in that court date, the judge will assess the facts of the case. So they'll hear from the applicant and the potential parent. Um, and by the end of it, they may direct that a DNA test be carried out to confirm the child's parentage. Um, of course, if you are using legal representatives, we will also come with a list of DNA providers. And it will also be established in that hearing what DNA test provider they will both use to conduct the DNA test. Okay. so. Uh, at this point, the baby was born, and at, and at that time, you know, we were able to do the DNA test. So uh, the baby and, and the father. So when we did that, uh, it came positive, and and so good result indeed. And then we obviously well was able we were able to move forward with the application, and eventually you were granted live to remain in the UK. So congratulations. <laughs> um, but that's not the end of it. I'm just going to talk about quickly because 
Do you know, the, the fact that you were subjected to domestic violence, you were not able to, to work at all. Obviously, it's very expensive to make an application uh, to the Home Office and any court fees. So just quickly, Micah, what did we have to do? Um, we have requested that the uh, respondent, uh, in this case, pay for the legal fees. Now, of course, as the judge highlighted in the hearing as well, um, a lot of the time there's no reason to not do the DNA test. Um, it yeah. won't. It, it benefits the child as well as the mother. You know, how could we establish that the child's British if we can't mm -hmm. prove that they are the father? Um, mm -hmm. And unfortunately, when it comes to asking to, for the respondent to pay the cost or for anyone to, of, of course, it's not met with warmth or positivity. Um, yeah. So if, you know, the, the respondent's not cooperating, we will have to apply for a court order. Um, and this yeah. is separate to the application for declaration of parentage. As well, well. We, we didn't have to pay for the, the actual court fee, did we? Because we applied for the fee exemption. And at the same time, also with the immigration application, because, um, you know, the fact is that she, uh, Sheena wasn't working and the application itself was so expensive. Mm -hmm. So uh, everything, um, thank God that uh, went your way. So we didn't have to pay for all of that. Okay, so thank you, Micah. You did very well <laughs> and, uh, for the first time. You know, welcome to One New Connect. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> so, Shoshina, basically going back to you, uh, again, thank you for taking part in, in this show because what we're trying to show is that you can make an application as a parent of a British child, even though there is a question about the paternity. Uh, you know, the um, there's no, you can't prove who the father is, but you know, we can do something about it. So um, thank you so much for uh, for being here and I'll see you soon, okay? Thank you, thank you Shana. Take care. care. So that's it um, for today's um, topic. Uh, if you have any questions about this uh, type of application, please do contact One New Connect and then we can discuss about your situation. So over to you, Rose. Crystal and uh, uh, so refreshing also to have Micah on the show. Thank you for joining us, Micah. But this is a question for both of you. What is the difference between um, a criminal case and a paternity suit? Because my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, is when you have a case which is criminal, um, a, 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 the person is not forced or you're not obliged to give your DNA sample okay, and we, here we, the, the, the court here can can actually summon the person yes uh, for yeah, the opportunity. Yeah. yeah yeah so they'll hear the, the reasons why um they need this uh, dna test and and i guess for a lot of the time it's to establish a child's citizenship status and um being British obviously affords you a lot of rights. So, you know, your access to healthcare, education, and all of that. And um, I, I think that it's very important that we've got that in place because uh, it allows uh, children whose parents aren't necessarily getting along to still have those rights, regardless of their relationship status. Yeah, it's for the, for the best interest of the child. So if the other parent does not comply with the court order, or court directions, they they will be in contempt of court, so there will be there okay. will be penalty. And how about the cost? Like for example, the what the, the person or the Filipina who who is applying for it, who is fighting the case, if that person doesn't have money, how, how what amount are we talking about here to afford a solicitor as well as? the the process the dna test uh, thousands it's not cheap um so we had to basically re represent the client to say look she can't afford it and but the, the judge was being fair you know you know we can't look uh, to look into so much detail but the judge was being fair and we said she was actually destitute she can't afford legal fees even you know she was getting help from uh friends and so, you know, we we, we are uh, going through the process about the legal fees with the other side. Um, 
because you know she she can't afford to, to make any more payments but we were there you know we were being fair um she couldn't get a, a legal aid we're not legal aid firms that dice listers but uh, we wanted the main uh, uh, objective of this uh case is for her to have uh the leave to remain in the uk it's not about money for us really it's, it's really to help her um okay. stay in the country wow crystal so para sa inyo, why did you take this case because you um, said it's not for the money it's no. more about the principle perhaps it is, yeah. you know wanting for for her to win the case so you felt that there was injustice from the start absolutely it's 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 there's no question about it it's about the child who is british but you know the father did not recognize that did not accept that so i wanted to know if he's in, indeed the father whether or not i wanted to know and the fact that she has to be with her child in the uk you know she has every right to be here to raise a british child in the uk so i, I think uh you know we did that you know we helped her uh to to stay in the country through all this process and and uh i'm glad i'm glad that we did well congratulations to both of you or the three of you power women you fought it out and uh, yeah, there's, a, there's a guy who's involved in the in here let's not mention, <laughs> let us not mention him <laughs> <laughs> yes just ask for now <laughs> okay well Thank you so much for that. Um, according to Jay Montalibano MacLeod, our, our associate producer, very inspiring and informative, guys. Proud of you all. Thank you, Jay. Marami salamat, Crystal Dias and Michael Lee. We will pause for a break before we say bye. Gregorio. Nagbabalik po ang One You Connect at napanood niyo naman very very quickly I'll just I just want to announce na nagbabalik na rin po ang live entertainment ng The Filipino Channel. This is what uh, TFC does best ang pagbibigay ng world-class entertainment. So, magkita-kita po tayo sa July 30 Apps Court in Surrey. And also, tune in dahil magbibigay tayo ng mga tickets for for our viewers na nanonood sa atin sa One You Connect. Crystal? Yes. it's It looks amazing, by the way, because I've, I've seen uh, Bamboo, absolutely fantastic performer. Yeah. So, actually, I'm looking forward to it if I get, you know, free tickets. <laughs> <laughs> we shall arrange that, especially yes. that you have done um, a wonderful job with uh, the case of Sheena. 
Anyway, mabatiin ko lang yung mga nanonood sa atin ngayon. Carmen Hickey, mula po yan sa Kent. Uh, nakita ko yung mami ko, ma'am, mami, <laughs> Salud Eclarinal. Also, our menti. Nandito si Kyla. Kyla, hi, hi Kyla. Kyla. For sharing and for watching. And Dan, Dan uh, Rebello was here a while ago. Also, I'd like to say congratulations to Enfid UK. J and I were there last night for the celebration of the 10th year founding anniversary of um, Enfid UK. So congratulations. Congratulations. Officers, uh, board members, tama ba? Board of Directors ng Enfid UK and the first and the, the current ch uh, chairman, chairwoman and chairman of uh, Enfid UK. Congratulations for uh, serving the Filipino community in the UK and in Europe through Enfid UK and Enfid Europe with the chairman, si Christian Estrada. And the UK is uh, Ronald Sipa, is correct? Yes, yes. Yeah. that's right. Okay, so yeah. nandyan po ang isang hapon na naman ng ating public service. Pagbibigay sa inyo ng impormasyon, pagbibigay sa inyo ng inspiration through our stories and through our guests. Ako po si Rose Eclarinal. Ito po ang Kwentong Pinoy, Kwentong Migrante, Kwentong One You Connect. And I'm Crystal Diaz. Hanggang sa huli sa so One You Connect. You connect. Kung saan ka man dalhin ang kapalaran Iisang bayan lang sa puso mo'y naman Inagulan at babalikan Konting tiis na lang at hanggang